Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Let's Talk About It podcast. I am your host, Apostle Rosemary, along with my wonderful, awesome husband, Apostle Herbie. He's absent this morning from the broadcast. This is going to be our first live video podcast. Um, March the 24th will be our three-year anniversary that we have had our podcast that God birthed out of us. And we are grateful for everything that God is doing globally for his people. At this time today, um, I have a very special guest all the way from Abuja, Nigeria, in Africa, our wonderful, wonderful friend whom God connected us to back in 2020. His name is Apostle Gideon Aguine. Um, He is a wonderful man of God. He is a great man of God, and he has been a blessing to us and many other people. I would encourage anyone that is able to jump on this broadcast to be a blessing today. And I'm also going to share some links that you can sow into this word, sow into what God is doing in the lives of his people globally. And we know that God is going to bless you. Today's topic is going to be heaven is travailing. Heaven is travailing. And it's also um, birthing heaven's purpose. So we want you all to know on today, if you see me look to the side, it's because I've got my iPad, um, but I'm also going to try to keep my eyes here on the camera. Um, But we want you all to know on today that God has a word with your name on it. God has a blessing with your name on it. So hang in there with us, stick there today, get just set down and enter into what God is going to release on this live broadcast from this great man of God, I will be here with him and I'm going to be feasting as well. Amen. The Lord told me, birth it, build it, and I will establish it. Heaven is travailing and birthing forth heaven's purpose. There is a newness which has been been to reestablish the things of God. There is a realigning of the lives of God's people. Many of you will no longer desire to be connected with people, places, nor things that you were connected with back in 2022. God is moving you. He's realigning you for the assignment that's on your life. Why is God doing this, you ask? Because the Lord has been exposing the intents of the hearts of the people. My God. The Lord has stripped naked before you And no matter what they say, what they teach, what they preach, and what they prophesy, the wickedness of their hearts are open unto you. The Lord has allowed you to peer behind the veil into the heavens and begin to see the moving and the strategic alignment of what God has upon your life and upon the life of the people that are connected to you. So at this time, I want you all to open up your hearts, open up your minds and open up your spirit to receive this wonderful man of God, Apostle Agini, all the way from Abuja, Nigeria. And I'm going to yield the platform to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Yes. Well, I, I, I want to thank God for this great, wonderful privilege. Um, to come on this very particular platform yes. just to be a blessing to the body of Christ around the globe. Yes. May I also use this opportunity to thank Apostle Rosemary Neverson, great woman of God with passion and so excited about the things of the kingdom. And I thank God for her zeal and her relentless effort just to see that you are blessed today. And she's a great woman of God with deep revelation of the word of God that I have so much of respect for. And I'm blessed and I feel honored to be on her platform today. Wherever you're watching me from in Abuja, or probably in the United States of America, down to Mexico or Colombia, wherever you are in the world, please know that Apostle Rosemary Neverson is a great woman of God with profound integrity. You can always take her word. She's a blessing to the body of Christ. And I feel honored to be on her platform today. Once again, I want to thank you, Apostle, for being a blessing. And you're so welcome. You're so welcome. God bless you. Amen. Today we'll be talking about heaven's travel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take our text 
from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 12 down to 18. But before I continue, may I say this? You've got to be spiritual to understand when we talk about heaven's travail, because we are on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. The tendency for any human being to begin to reason what concerns you about heaven, what do you know about heaven, is always there. Because we are here physically on Earth. So we know much about Earth, planet Earth, more than the heavens. But yeah. through the revelation of the Word of God, through the revelation of the Word of God, and through the understanding and interpretation of the Scripture, we also have knowledge of what heaven is, what heaven travels about, and what heaven gets excited about, and how it's going to look like, because the Word of God is the final authority. The Word of God, the Bible, is the final explanation on how the heavens react and how the heaven is. Yes. And so there is no science that can help me understand this much more than the Bible, than the Word of God. So today I bring the Word of life, the Word of God to you, not in my own strength or intelligence, but by the strength of the Spirit of God. And I hope and pray that a few times we're going to be spending together here this hour. It is my prayer that the Lord will bless you. Uh, and so if you're in this part of the world, I said good morning or good afternoon to you. Uh, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening, and I bless you in the name of the Lord God of heaven. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one verse of the scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 12. And I read, I, the preacher, was a king over Israel in Jerusalem. Now I, the preacher, was a king over Israel in Jerusalem. Yes. And I read verse 13. Mm -hmm. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning things that are done under heaven. This sort of travail had given to the Son of Man to be exercised with. Mm -hmm. Now, i like you to understand this. I'm going to read the rest of the scripture. He said, the preacher was a king over Israel in Jerusalem. Now, you will agree with me that King Solomon, who is largely agreed to be the author of the book of Ecclesiastes and Doubt of Proverbs, mm -hmm. was the king over the nation of Israel. Yes. And he said, I, the preacher, was a king over Israel in Jerusalem, being the headquarter of Israel back then and even now today. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And yes. then he said, I gave my heart. He was a king and he gave his heart. He yes. was a king. He gave his heart to wisdom. Mm -hmm. He said, I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom all things that are done under heaven. Did so travail had God given to the sons of men to be exercised with. Now understand this because this is very deep. Mm -hmm. Now, here was a king over Israel mm -hmm. where the luxury of life was available. Everything he needed as a king was available. He doesn't need to enter transportation for six hours or three hours to get what to eat. Yes. He was a king. So everything he needed, the affluence, the beauty, the power, and the glory of a king, he experienced it. Yes. He experienced it. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, yes. in verse 2, he said, in his wealth and pleasure, in his wealth and pleasure, he gave his heart yes. to search out for wisdom. My to Lord. search out for wisdom. Now, this was a king who dedicated his heart, his time, to search for wisdom. Why is he searching for wisdom? Mm, because yes. wisdom cannot be gotten from the four walls of institution. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wisdom that saves you, wisdom that preserves you, wisdom that is of God cannot be gotten from the school. Yes. And so he gave his heart to search for wisdom concerning the things that are under the sun. Yes. There are many other things under the sun that you have no knowledge of until you seek for it. But yes. then King Solomon made us to understand that he gave his heart Mm -hmm. To search for wisdom. It yes. is important that in these last days, mm -hmm. if we 
must testify of the testimony of Christ. Yes. If we must speak in the knowledge and in the wisdom of God that the world will bow to the knowledge of Christ, then we need to seek wisdom from God. We need to admit that we don't have wisdom, that it's only God that gives wisdom. And so Solomon searched for wisdom, a travail, and you know very much that how that God has blessed him with wisdom. Yes. God gave him the sons of men to exercise with, because wisdom place you in the proper place. Amen. Wisdom makes you not to lose, but to gain. Amen. Wisdom helps you to relate with people. Wisdom helps you to know who to relate with people. Wisdom helps you to know when a relationship should be over. Amen. Wisdom is important. Mm -hmm. And in verse 14, he said, I've seen all the works that are done under the sun. Mm -hmm. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yes. Now, this was a king. Please underline the fact that this was written by a king. So when a king said he has seen all the works under the sun, he truly has seen it. Mm -hmm. You talk about fame, he has seen it. Mm -hmm. You talk about money, he has seen it. You talk about women, he has seen it. You talk about warriors, he has seen it. You talk about war, he has seen it. He said he has seen everything under the sun, and all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, what does that mean? There are things that you truly don't need, but your heart as human, you're looking for it. Yes, amen. It will end up in vexation of the spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. There are some things that you really, you're looking for it. You want to get it. You spend all your time, your energy, your resources. Eventually, you got it and you lost interest in it. Yes. This amen. is vanity. Uh -huh. Vexation of the spirit. And you keep wondering, with all the stress, with all the struggle, with all the hustling, you got it and now you have lost interest. Because they are all vexation of the spirit. Therefore, go for the wisdom of God because the wisdom of God sustains you. The wisdom of God keeps you. The wisdom of God helps you to know the ways of internal life. The wisdom of God helps you to be at your best here under the sun. The wisdom of God. Now look at verse 15 because I'm sure that Apostle Rosemary is coming to add to the things I'm saying. But you listen to me carefully. Listen to verse 15. He said, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. These are direct words. And he, uh, uh, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. Oh my God. Yes. I, I pondered over this scripture. He said, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. Yes. What does that mean? What is wrong is wrong. That's right. What it, is not right is not right. It doesn't matter how you paint it with very fine English words or very... Uh, Oh my God, what is not good is not good. He said, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. Uh -huh. It is crooked and it remains crooked. If it is straight, it is straight. Yes. So it means that there are some, you cannot turn good to become evil. You, can, you cannot make evil to become good. Evil is evil. Good is good. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. Uh -huh. So know that the laws of God, you can turn it otherwise. Straight. So, that and let me say this. You can turn it otherwise. Right. Let me say this. You can, you can quietly say, I hate somebody. Mm -hmm. And you can quietly also say, I love somebody. Yes. Same tone, but different meaning. Mm -hmm. Very, you can say, I hate you calmly. You can hate somebody saying it very calmly. I, I hate you. You can equally say it, I love you. The same voice, but different meaning and different impact. Yes. But that you say it very quiet and very calmly does not make it right. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, that which is crooked is crooked. That which is straight is straight. Mm -hmm. So I, it is important that when you are relating with people, having a relationship in your company, in your place of work, in the ministry, and whatsoever you are doing, the word integrity must be a watchword for you and me. Mm -hmm. Because that which 
cannot be made straight. He said, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. Yes, sir. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. You mm. know, man's need is insatiable. You mm. cannot satisfy the needs of man. And he said, that which is wanting cannot be numbered. Whatever that you desire that you have not seen with your eyes, you cannot include it among your possession. Yes. Because you haven't seen it. You're looking for it. Mm -hmm. Today, it is my prayer that whatever that you do, whatever that you're pursuing, please note that the place of wisdom, you cannot underestimate the place of wisdom because without wisdom, a man or a woman, whoever, you are completely foolish. It is wisdom that makes people to respect you. It is wisdom that makes you to be straight and not to be crooked. Amen. Amen. And I read, and I read verse 16, and I'm going to ask Apostle to read verse 17 and 18, and she will bring one or two words, and then I will also come up again. And I read verse 16. I commune with my own heart. Say, lo, I am come to a great estate, and I've gotten more wisdom than all that I have been before me. Jerusalem, yet my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, my God. Mm. Now, King Solomon made a boast of his experience, his wisdom, mm -hmm. and knowledge. Yes. Now, I commend him for his wisdom and knowledge because it, was, it wasn't just acquired. It was given to him by God. Mm -hmm. It was given to him by God. And he said before him, there was no man that was wise. And after him, there was no man that is as wise or that, like King Solomon. That is because God endowed him and blessed him with wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Please, yes. in all you're getting, the Bible made us to understand, get understanding. Because that is wisdom. Do you have wisdom? If mm -hmm. you don't have wisdom, the scripture made it available, made it known to us that we should ask God. Because the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure. Yes, It is different from the wisdom or the smartness of this world. Mm -hmm. Seek for the godly wisdom that can only be found in Christ Jesus. Amen. And Solomon made a boast of his wisdom. It is by wisdom that you can lead your family. It is by wisdom that you can live with other people. It is by wisdom that you can walk fine. It is by wisdom that you can keep relationship. It is by wisdom that you can follow the precepts, the ways of the Lord. Yes. Do you have wisdom? Amen. Do you have wisdom? Yes. If you don't have wisdom, you're going to be losing all that you have labored to acquire. If you don't have knowledge, you would labor to gather and yet you will lose it because you don't have wisdom and the knowledge to sustain what your strength and labor has given to you. Today, I put it to you. Do you have wisdom? My if God. you don't have wisdom, the Bible made us to ask. Made us to understand you can ask God for wisdom. If you can ask God for a car, ask God for food, ask God for money. What stops you from asking God to give you wisdom? Amen. My Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Apostle, I would like you to read verse 18, uh, probably verse 17 and mm. then 18, and then you can bring a word to that before I come up again. We're oh. here together, and it's a good time. Yes, amen. All right, I am coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And it reads, and I have, and I gave my heart to know wisdom. Isn't it amazing how King Solomon had everything that a king could ever want? He was ruler and he was doing all of these things over, Jer over Israel, there in Jerusalem. And all of these things he had yet, he required the wisdom of God to be able to know how to rule over the kingdom. And because of this, King um, Solomon knew that he had to ask for wisdom. But in order for him to ask for this wisdom, people of God, he had to have the heart 
He had to have a circumcised heart, a heart that was after God, a heart that was striving to do the right thing all the time, not sometimes. You see, as a people of God, we want to do what we want to do, but we don't want to submit to the will of God. We don't want to walk in obedience. We don't want to walk in humility. We're so concerned about platforms and notoriety and connections and networking. And then we compromise our walk with God. But has our hearts been circumcised, people of God, my God, and to no wow. madness and folly? And then Solomon says, I perceive that this also is vexation of the spirit. You know, there are times that we, we know in the word, the word of God tells us that we are to love what he loves and we are to hate what he hates. Why is it then that we have allowed it ourselves as Christians and as people of God to become engrafted into the worldly things? We are to be ye separate, but we're not doing that. In 1 Timothy 3 and 5, it tells us that we are having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We want to read part A of that text, but we don't want to do the application part of part B, which says to have nothing to do or to turn away from these type of people. What does that mean? It means the association, the type of people that we are connecting ourselves with. Is it really a kingdom alignment? This is the hour that we must be aligned with heaven in order to birth forth our purpose here within the earth realm. And how do we do that? We have to have godly wisdom because wisdom leads guys and directs us in all of truth of what God is telling us. This is also what I would like to call the GPS because we have the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but do we have wisdom? Just like Apostle again, they say the word of God tells us if we lack wisdom, then we are to do what? We are to ask. And this is what I've seen is that the body of Christ, we've gotten to a place where we want a popcorn or a microwave anointing. We don't want to labor. We don't want to fast. We don't want to consecrate. We don't want to pray. We don't want to submit. We don't want to walk in humility. We want a name. We want a title, but we don't have the grace, therefore, to be in that position. So guess what? Why? Because God has not graced many people for it. What has happened is that on the hand of the ministry, the hand of gospel, we can also look at the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. But what has happened is everyone wants to be an apostle. Everyone wants to be a prophet. No one wants to be an evangelist. No one wants to be a pastor. No one wants to be a teacher. When this happened, what is it? What is happening within the body of Christ? This is what's happening. If we don't have the teachers, who's going to ground the people in the word of God? If we don't have the pastors, who's going to guard the sheep from the raving wolves in the pasture? My God. If we don't have the evangelists, who's going to gather the hearts of the people? What is wrong with this? Everyone wants to be a prophet. Why? Because the prophet is the one that begins to guide, begins to point out things, begins to uncover the hidden things. But I want people to understand that then they want to go like they're in school. They want to go from being a teacher to being um, a, a, a pastor, to being an evangelist, to being a prophet, to being apostle. But then they, they want to do like they're graduating from step to step to step. Right? That's not biblical, baby. The word of God says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers and uh, some pastors and teachers. That's what the word of God says, some, not all. And so we need to understand something. When you have the wisdom of God, you understand men and women of God that guess what? That everybody's not called to the same grace. Everybody's not called to the same function. That's why the word of God tells us that we are many members, but we're one body. And guess what? If we walk in our anointing and our assignment, our purpose that God has called each and every one of us to, then guess what? There is cohesion in the realm of the spirit. This is where strength and unity comes in. This is where the one mind on one accord, the oneness of God comes in. But the enemy is robbing the church bankrupt because the church is fighting one another. Men and women of God are fighting one another. Everybody's being jealous of their brothers and their sisters in the Lord. Why? And I tell people 
They may look at the glory upon the lives of the people, but they don't know your story. They don't know your go through. They don't know what you had to pay for that. Because I tell people all the time, the cost is it will cost you everything, my Lord. Verse 18 says, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increases sorrow. So we have come to tell you today that when you acquire wisdom, the wisdom of God, it's going to come with much grief. Why? Because you're going to begin to understand things. Your heart is going to be compelled to such a compassion. You're going to see things. Your, your eyes are going to be unveiled. The scales are going to fall off. You're going to be able to see things for what they are. And at one point, without the wisdom, you may have looked at someone walking in rebellion and said, oh, well, they're just hurt. Oh, they they just they just need someone to love them past the pain. When God is saying, no, 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 they have a spirit of Leviathan. They are a Jezebel. They are coming to tear up the body of Christ because they don't want to let go that spirit of pride, the Leviathan. Why? Because now God has taken the scales off our eyes. And now we are piercing through the lens of heaven and we're seeing at this moment and in this timing, in this season, this Kairos timing of God. Now we're truly able to look at these people and we're able to see that, you know what? They were a Jezebel all alone. They had the mm. spirit of Leviathan all alone. Ah, Job 42 talks about the Leviathan. It is biblical. So then we begin to understand something. We begin to see that, you know what? I thought that they were just hurting. I thought that they just needed some extra love. But then God begins to say, no, with wisdom, I'm going to show you, son. With wisdom, I'm going to show you, daughter. Then you begin to understand when God begins to peel back the layers and he begins to say, no, it was their heart all along. <laughs> it's because they have unforgiveness that's taken a root in their heart and it's begun to spring out and grow other branches that have taken a toll on them. And even in the trenches of their mind, the unforgiveness is there. You know, they can get up, they can sing, but they're still messed up. They, they still got a root of bitterness. They, they, they know how to sing, but they don't know how to live. They know how to preach and teach, but they don't know how to live. They know how to prophesy, but they don't know how to live. They know how to speak in tongues, but they don't know how to live. They know how to do everything else. They know how to act like the church. They know how to look like the church. And without wisdom, people of God, we will miss this thing. This is why King Solomon said to himself, you know what? I'm a king. I have everything. But you know what? The one thing I need is wisdom. Because it doesn't matter how much riches you have. It doesn't matter the platform. It doesn't matter the brand. It doesn't matter the notoriety. All that matters is this one thing. Do I have wisdom? Because God can give you all of these monetary things. And without wisdom, you're just like the prodigal son. You will squander it because you really don't understand what it is that God has given you. So anyone that likes wisdom, the word of God says, let us ask. And Solomon knew this. King Solomon knew this. King Solomon got to the place where he said to himself, I, I, my, my, um, it is dropped, but give me a moment. Soon as he comes back, I'll let him back in. But King Solomon knew this. King Solomon knew that, that he had um, needed to ask for wisdom. He knew that if he would ask for the wisdom, that God would give him the wisdom. Um, soon as he logs back in, then I'll, I'll go ahead and split the screen again. But, you know, we need to understand that. And then also we need to understand that this wisdom, as we've been saying, it's going to cost you something. This wisdom is not going to come easy. People are not going to understand you. People are not going to receive you. People are not going to accept you many times. Sometimes people may not even love you. That's the way to feel. They may not like you. They may not care for you. Why? Because you're speaking sound doctrine. Wisdom has given you the ability to stand in a place all by yourself. Wisdom has given you the ability to be able to step out on nothing and know that something is there. Wisdom has given you the choice 
to say to yourself, you know what? At one time, I thought that it was this situation, but God, I know that it was something totally different. Wisdom, the wisdom of God. And the word of God also tells us in part B of Ecclesiastes 1 and 18, it says, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So guess what? With much knowledge, there will be sorrow. But we've come to tell you today to be encouraged, men and women of God, to be encouraged and understand that whatever it is that you're facing, God is yet able. Why? Because heaven is travailing and it is birthing forth the purpose of heaven. Heaven is in travail, everybody. Ecclesiastics. When we look at verse one and one, it talks about the vanity of the world. Um, when we look at verse two through 11, it talks about everything is meaningless. In other words, people of God, everything is meaningless without God and without his wisdom. Wisdom allows us to be able to navigate the things of the kingdom, wisdom. When we look at um, verses 12 through 18, which is where we're speaking from today, it talks about the vanity of human wisdom. In verse 12 through 18, it talks about, um, it deals with the teacher when he speaks the brutality or the vanity of wisdom. And then we, um, we begin to see, hold on, apostles hitting me up. And we begin to see, hold on, sorry about this. We begin to see here the futility. Um, what does the futility, I mean, the futility. What does futility mean? The word futility means the use, the pointlessness or the usefulness. Um, give me a minute. He's checking to see something going on with his network. He'll be back. So we begin to see, we, we begin to understand that the word futility means the pointlessness or the uselessness. Isn't it something that when we don't have um, the wisdom of God, um, we it is pointless. Um, it, it, we feel, uh, and it becomes useless to us. Should I say it becomes useless? The things that we're doing, we feel like, uh, we feel like the people when there was the wall of Jericho that was erected and nothing was coming in and nothing was able to go out. So in other words, they were shut up in Jericho. And then we began to understand that because of this, that there was um, a time that had come that the Lord began to let them know to lift up a praise. But when you do this, when you lift up a praise, I need you to march around that wall seven times. And as you march around that wall seven times, then you will begin to shout and scream and I'm going to bring the wall down. And that's what exactly what happened. The Lord brought the wall down. And so we begin to understand that what God is saying in this hour and this season is when you are lacking something like wisdom, the word of God says, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. And all you have to do is ask for this wisdom. And God said, he's going to give it to you. So in this season, Anything, if you don't get anything else from this message on today about heaven is travailing, remember this is dealing with the deeper things of God. This is dealing with what is going on. Heaven is pregnant with purpose. Heaven is pregnant with destiny. Heaven is pregnant with everything you prayed for, but the hold up is you. Why is the hold up you? Because you're still harboring unforgiveness in your heart. You've, you've, you've got to a place where you feel as though, well, I, I, I forgave them. No, you haven't forgiven them because if you forgave them, then you would have been asking God to restore me, God, make me over again, circumcise my heart, purify me, God. Get me to a place, God, that I can love them the way they should be loved with the agape love of Jesus Christ. Get me to a place, God, where I can begin to understand, God, that it's not about me, that that I, I, I they owe me an apology. No, no, no. The one thing we have to do is forgive and let it go. Why do we do that? We do that because it shows the maturity and the character of who you are. When you can get to a place, place. And you can begin and you to can yourself 
that you know what? I'm going to forgive even when I don't get an apology. I'm going to forgive. And I'm even when someone doesn't say that they're sorry, I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to move on. Why do we do this? Because it's a heart matter. We get to the place where we say and understand this when we mature and we have the wisdom of God that, you know what, forgiveness is not for the other person, but forgiveness is for me. Why is that? Because the forgiveness sets you free. Forgiveness takes you from a place of bondage into a place of freedom, a place of restoration, a place of wholeness. Why? Because anytime we hold um, some type of unforgiveness in our heart, then guess what? It's a sin. And when it becomes a sin, you know what it does? It creates a strong man. And when we talk about that strong man, what that strong man does is he stands there and he holds the door ajar and he, he holds it open so that the strongholds can begin to come in. What are the strongholds? You have a root of bitterness. Then because you've been wounded, you suffered soul trauma. Then guess what? Then he begins to let that resentment come in. Okay, now I've got a root of resentment. Now I've got a root of rebellion. Now I've got a root of disobedience. All of these things begin to come in. And the more we sit there and we're not um, to a place that we've learned how to ask God for this wisdom as King Solomon had, then we begin to open ourselves up because then the enemy has a foothold on us. The enemy has a door. The enemy has a gate. The enemy is able to come in and to wreak havoc in your life. Then you're fasting, you're praying, you're consecrating, and you're not hearing God answer you back. You're not being set free. You're not receiving what you're asking for from God. Why? Because you're still messed up because you did not have the ability nor the desire because of the condition of your heart to ask God for wisdom. And that's all God is saying. Those that are lacking wisdom, let them ask. Come to me, ask and ask, and I'll give it freely to you. That's all Solomon understood. But because you think about it, Solomon is saying it started with his heart. It was about his heart. His heart was right. His heart was conditioned. His heart was circumcised. So Solomon realized that, you know what? I, 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 I've got all of this stuff. I'm wealthy. I'm, I'm doing well. I've got all of these things going on. But guess what? I like wisdom. Why is it? It's a network issue. Don't worry. He'll be back. So we begin to understand this. So on futility, we talked about the pointlessness or the uselessness. Um, it is a fruitlessness. It is vanity. It is worthlessness. It is, it is in effect, um, ineffectuality. It's ineffectiveness. Inefficiency. It is a failure. Unproductiveness. It is a barrenness. Unprofitable. Abortive. It is impotence. It is hollowness. It is emptiness. It is meaningless. It is formless. It is hopelessness and it is sterility. What am I saying? Apostle Rosemary saying this. When you see people producing fruits like the fig tree, look like it was ready, it was bearing fruits. Jesus saw it and he saw that the leaves were in full bloom and it looked like it had good fruits on it. It was producing good figs. But what happened was, it was fruitlessness and he cursed the fig tree to die. Why? Because God is saying in this hour, I've had enough of the imposters. I've had enough of fruitless people that are professing their Christians. I've had enough of people that are saying that they're children of God, but still the evidence in their fruit shows me and it tells me that guess what? The fruits that they're producing are not the Galatians 5 and 22 to 23 fruits. They're not the good fruits. They're, 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 they're pointless fruits. They're barren fruits. Uh, uh, they're dead works. That's why they're barren. They're dead works. Um, they're abortiveness. They start something. Then they can't carry it. We'll put it this way. They're pregnant with, with purpose, with destiny, but they can't carry it to full term. Why? Because there is an abortiveness where they abort their destiny, they abort their purpose. Why? Because they're dealing with some things that they still haven't given to God and allow God to deliver them, to heal them, to set them free and to restore them, to be effective tools for his purpose in the kingdom. When we look at the, the, the fact that there, there, um, there's ineffectiveness, they're talking, they're speaking, 
their unproductiveness, the unproductiveness. When this happens, you'll see people that have the ability to birth all kinds of things. Every time you turn around, they birthing something. They're doing something. They're going this place. They're doing this. They're doing that. But guess what? It's ineffectiveness. Why? They don't have the follow through. It, there's a barrenness. Um, there's an impotence. There's a hollowness. There is an emptiness. There's a meaningless part to that. Why? Because now we begin to understand there is sterility. They're birthing all of these things, but it has no purpose. Why? Because they have not yet recognized their purpose because they're all over the place. Every time you turn around, they're changing this. They're doing this. They're doing that. And there's nothing wrong with being able to birth a thing. But guess what? Think about, think about, um, think about Penina. Think about all the children that Penina had. She had all of these children, but we don't see any of their names written down in the word. But then we begin to look over and we see Samuel's mother. We see Hannah. Hannah cried out from her heart and she knew that, you know what? I need God. I need God to move. God, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. If you give me a son, I'll give you a prophet. If you give me a son, I'll give you a mouthpiece. If you give me a son, I'll give you someone that can vindicate you. Ah, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And you know what? Right now today, many times people, we preach, we teach, we talk about, we read about, we meditate on the word of God that talks about prophet Samuel. We talk about all of this. And you know what? Think about it. God used him mightily. When Saul wouldn't follow through, guess what? Samuel did. Samuel hewed Agag into pieces. He did the, and, and completed the assignment that God had given King Saul. Why? Because Samuel had a circumcised heart and he knew if I don't have nothing else, you know what? I know that God has called me to this purpose. So when we look at King Solomon and we look at Ecclesiastics chapter one, verses 12 through 18, we begin to understand that what God is saying is this, that heaven is travailing. In order to really understand heaven is pregnant with some things. Heaven is releasing some things. That's why when God began to tell me, he said, birth it, I, when I spoke in Nigeria a few months ago, the Lord began to tell me, he said, tell the people to birth it, to build it, and I will establish it. And I said, okay, God, okay, I understand it. I understand it. Some of you have been pregnant for a long time. You've been overdue. Some of you have threatened to abort your destiny and your purpose, but God has sent us here today to tell you that heaven is in travail. Heaven is travailing and it's birthing heaven's purposes. What God says you prayed for, what you've asked for, what you've consecrated for, what you fast for, God says, you know what? Now I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to bring you out. Now I'm going to birth you forth. And God is saying, it's your time and it's your season. I know many of you, people have come against you. I know many of you, they've tried to kill your godly character. I know many of you, people have lied on you. I know many of you, people have tried to ostracize you. I know many of you, you poured out and you've given everything you've had and people have turned around and tried to reject you. And I've come to tell you that God said they were not the correct connection, nor were they the right association. I told a woman of God, somebody sent me something about delete, delete, delete. And I want you all to know today that this is the day that many of you need to delete some people. You need to delete some associations. You need to delete some places. You need to delete some things you're doing. You know what I do? I go through my Facebook. I go through my social media. This is just me. And I go through. And when I begin to see spirits manifesting people, regardless of what they're professing and who they're professing they are, I unfollow. I unfollow and I put, it's like a probational period. I have a set time after unfollowing that I'm still watching the fruits. I'm still listening for the evidence. And guess what? If I still see that instead of coming forward, they still in the same place or they're still digressing and, and regressing and all of this, you know what I do? Then I decide to delete, delete. 
If you have people that are jumping on your social media feed, every time you put something out there and you're trying to be encouraging, you're trying to empower the people of God, you're trying to uplift the people of God, but they always want to get on it. They always want to say negative things. You know what you do, baby? Then you have to get to a place where you have to restrict them and eventually you may have to block them or you may have to just go on and delete them. Pray about it. Let God lead you because this is the hour to have the wisdom of God. This is the hour in the season that you say, God, I need your wisdom. God, I need you. I need you to do a thing. And I need to see if, if what you're showing me, God, is what you're saying in this season. Is this really what I need to do? Are they really the people I need to connect with? Are they really the people I need to allow in my church or my ministry to speak or teach or preach or whatever over my people? See, this is where wisdom comes in. When wisdoms are done, when, when we have the wisdom of God, when we have the wisdom of God, when we are, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm texting back Apostle Guinea. He's having network problems in um, Africa there in Nigeria. So when we have the wisdom of God, we begin to understand something that, you know what? That was not my association the whole time. This, these were not the people that I needed to be connected to for my destiny. God will condition your heart for that season. All you have to do is ask for the wisdom. Ask for wisdom. When you ask for wisdom like King Solomon did, guess what God will do? He'll blow your mind. The Lord will get you to the place where, you know what? You have the wisdom. You have my wisdom. So now you're able to decipher. Now you're able to discern even the more. Now you're able to see the hidden things they thought you didn't know about. Now, the, some of you, God is, because I know it's happened to me. God will let you hear the conversations. People will look at things that sometimes People will put on social media and they'll come back and say, woman of God, you know, such and such a man of God. And you know what I do? I still love them and keep on moving. Why? I Why? Do, I do. It's not for me. It's for God. Why? Because I have godly wisdom. And when you have godly wisdom, God is able to lead God and direct you in all his truth. He will begin to expose the hidden things, the very things, the plots, the plans and the schemes of the enemy and the adversary. So at this time, while we have Apostle Aguine back here, let me yield this to him and see what else he wants to say. Uh, my sincere apology for the network that made me uh, dropped out. Mm -hmm. Hold on just a minute. It's the network. He just froze. He just froze, guys. And we do apologize. Um, while he's froze, I'm going to tell you all, you can text to give and sow into this word that God has brought today at 844-961-4333. And you can choose to, I think I've got a tile on there, sow a seed or give an offering, whatever God leads your heart to do. Um, just be led by the Holy Spirit. You can do cash app at dollar sign, A is in Apple, R is in Rose, C is in Charlie, N is in Nancy, M-I-N. So A-R-C-N-M-I-N. -N. Um, you can do that. So he cut out again. The network is really cutting up today and we apologize. So we need to understand that. And let me see here. Um, you can also go to PayPal at PayPal me, PayPal.me. I'm going to put it on the screen. There it is. I'll put it on the screen. It's easier for me to put it on the screen. If you want to sow into what God has released here today, um, that heaven is travailing. Heaven is birthing forth the purpose of, of, of heaven. Heaven is bringing purpose into the earth ramp. We need to understand something, people of God. With the works that we're doing for God and for the kingdom, let it not be pointless. Let the works not be useless. Let the works not be fruitful in, fruitlessness. Excuse me, tongue tied. Let us not do it in vanity. Let us not do it in a spirit of pride. Let us not do, be um, walking in a spirit of rebellion. Um, let us not do worthless works that are ineffective, that, um, that are unproductive, that are barren, that are unprofitable, that are abortive, um, that are impotent, that are sterile. Let us do works that are of God. Let us do the works where God begins to say, you know what? Um, I, I just want to be a blessing. I just want to, to give unto you.
the word of God. I, I just, just this, when you go before to minister to people, realize that it's never about you. It's never about you, men and women of God, but it's always about God. God gets the glory in all things. We need to understand that it's never about you. It's always about God. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that when God is doing a work, when God is doing a thing, and when God has us to minister to the people, that it's always and always about God. Let God lead you, let God direct you, and let God be glorified in everything that you do. I just want to thank you all. And I apologize, Apostle Guinea, they're in, in Africa right now. They're having some network issues and he's tried to dial back in. You know, we'll have him back at a later date. We thank God for the word um, of wisdom that he has shared with us today that God had given him. Um, we want to thank you all for tuning in live. We want to also thank you all that will be re-watching this later in today. Um, and we just want to say, um, ask God for the wisdom, the wisdom to be able to lead his people, the wisdom to live right, to the wisdom to do right, and the wisdom to be effective, an effective tool for the body of Christ and for God. So we want to thank you all. Let me check out something here because I can't log out until I um, go in here and read my comments. So I just want you all to know, again, at the bottom of the screen, um, we've got the text to give, we've got the PayPal, and we've got Cash App if you want to sew into this, um, because we're going to be a blessing to Apostle Aguine, um, and we're going to bless him, praise God. And so at this time, we want to say Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. I'm just going to go through a few clips here um, and just put up my information here that you guys can see. Give me a minute here. I'll put myself small and then you'll be able to see it. If you want to contact us, you can contact me at um, or my husband, Apostle Herbie on Facebook at RCN Ministries. Also on our Apostolic Network at OSGAAN, which is One Sound Global Alliance Apostolic Network. Um, you can also um, join us, subscribe to our YouTube channels, um, which is at RCN Ministries Global TV or Apostle at Apostle Rosemary, um, RCN M O S G A. That's our second YouTube channel. And also on Instagram at Apostle underscore Rosemary C. Neverson. Um, you can also um, hit us up on our website, rcnministries.com or osgaglobal.com. Amen. So once again, we want to thank you. We want to thank Apostle Aguine for coming on today um, and to deliver a word from Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse 12 through 18. Um, which the word today was heaven is travailing, birthing heaven's purpose. So we want to give God all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. And we want to thank you all for joining us today live on our first um, YouTube video for live video, because usually we only do audio. We want to thank you all for joining us live and being a part of what God is doing in this hour and in this season. And we want to say to you all, go with God. Have a great, great rest of your morning and afternoon, wherever you're watching from. We love you. God bless you. And may God keep you. And you guys just have a great, great day. God bless.